I'd like to talk about an interesting battle that has occurred over the past few months inside of the Southern Baptist Convention. This is the largest of all the Protestant uh, denominations, and it's certainly the most important of the theologically conservative denominations. Now, the Southern Baptist Convention has been lobbied by the left and pushed and prodded to liberalize its position on gay rights, on trans issues, and so on. And this is, uh, this is going nowhere because you're not going to get a conservative body, theologically conservative body like the SBC, to do that. But there is a little bit of a Trojan horse, a little bit of a wedge issue, something on which even Southern Baptists are a little, well, let's say wobbly or weak, and that is the issue of ordaining women, of having women pastors. Not women in leadership positions in the church, which of course exists in evangelical and Protestant churches across the country, but women pastors specifically. Now, there are other den denominations, the Methodists, the Presbyterians, and so on, that do ordain women. and the the point of the Southern Baptist has been that, listen, if we start giving in on one issue, we're going to start giving in on all the others as well. In fact, you can trace a, a slippery slope, a straight path, a downward slide on the part of these other Protestant denominations where they started off, okay, we'll ordain women, and then pretty soon it is, okay, well, we're going to accept gays, we're going to ordain gays. In fact, we're going to punish pastors that show a reluctance to marry gay couples, and then we're going to accept abortion, we're going to allow it, and then in some cases, even celebrate abortion. There was a ridiculous um, Presbyterian church um, uh, female pastor who said that, quote, abortion is an act of love. I mean, think of the, what an abominable statement that is. In any event, um, the issue of ordaining women having women pastors came to a head because one of the largest members of the Southern Baptist um, Convention, namely Rick Warren's church, this is Saddleback Church in California, ordained three female pastors. And not only ordained them, but made an issue of it, basically sort of like, yes, we're doing this, and we are a pioneer, and we're opening the door to this very important development, and we don't think that there's anything wrong with doing this. Now, interestingly, a small a pastor and, uh, who runs a small church in Virginia uh, decided that he would look into this. His name was Mike Law. And so he just wrote a letter to the Southern Baptist Convention. He happened to know that there is a clause in the Southern Baptist Convention rules that say that you can't ordain women. And it's based upon a, a passage in Timothy in Scripture that basically says that the leadership position in a church must be held by a man. And so the Southern Baptist rule is based on that. And so what this guy did in an almost a harmless way is he sends an email to the Southern Baptist Convention saying, hey, listen, is a church that has a female pastor in good standing with the Southern Baptist Convention? I, I'm waiting for an answer. And uh, he said, thank you for all the good work that you're doing. He gets no answer. And of course, why? Because the Southern Baptist Convention knows that they've got some large churches, notably Rick Warren's church, that have ordained women, but they don't want to make an issue of it. And so interestingly, this guy, Mike Law, uh, decides he's going to contact other pastors, and he does. And they, uh, a bunch of them, in fact, uh, over 20,000 of these, um, um, uh, no, not 20,000, I'm sorry, but several hundred of these pastors sign a letter to the Southern Baptist Convention saying, we need some clarity on this issue. The executive committee of the Southern Baptist Convention is a little reluctant to put this up for a vote but there's enough pressure coming from all these Southern Baptist pastors that it goes uh, for a vote. And um, so now you, it's kind of a little bit of a David versus Goliath situation because you've got this small time pastor in Virginia going up against Rick Warren, who not only has a massive mega church, but is a cultural figure in his own right. Let's remember, this is the guy who wrote The Purpose Driven Life. Uh, and Rick Warren also trains pastors and claims to have tr uh, trained uh, thousands of them uh, over the years. So a very powerful figure in the Southern Baptist um, Conference. But it does go up for a vote. It goes before the full convention. And uh, Rick Warren makes an impassioned appeal. And he basically says, hey, listen, the Baptist uh, convention rules uh, cover 4,000 words. We disagree with you basically on one word, which is the word female before the word pastor. And he goes, what's the big deal? 
but evidently the Southern Baptist Convention agrees uh, that it is a big deal because by a fairly decisive vote, they uh, decide no. We doesn't matter that this is a very big congregation in Saddleback. It is not in good standing with the Southern Baptist Conference because um, it does, it has ordained women. It has flouted the rules and the rules are not going to be changed. So now there's a kind of attempt by the bureaucracy of the Southern Baptist to say, well, what does it mean to be in good standing? Can you still be affiliated with the Southern Baptist Convention, even if you are not, quote, in good standing? So you can see, again, an effort on the part of the SBC bureaucracy to finesse the issue and not make it a sharp dividing line. But the point, and I think this is the point of the dissenters, this is the point of the people who carried the vote, that Christianity is about drawing sharp lines where sharp lines need to be drawn. In other words, where there's a sharp line drawn in scripture, there needs to be a sharp line drawn by the church. And, and this means that, it doesn't mean that people can't disagree, uh, but it does mean that if they do disagree, they're not in good standing with the Southern Baptist Convention. Debbie and I are on a great health journey, but we still struggle to eat enough fruits, veggies, and fiber, and that is a requirement. Well, lucky for us, we discovered Balance of Nature, and what better way to get all your fruits and veggies plus fiber than with Balance of Nature? This is Balance of Nature's fruits and veggies in a capsule, so easy to take, made from fresh whole produce. The produce is powdered after an advanced vacuum cold process, which stabilizes the maximum nutrient content. And this is Balance of Nature's Fiber and Spice, a proprietary blend of fiber and 12 spices for overall and digestive health. Join Debbie and me. Start your journey to better health right now. Call 1-800-246-8751 or go to balanceofnature.com. You get 35% off your first preferred order by using discount code AMERICA. Again, it's balanceofnature.com or call 800-246-8751. Get 35% off your first preferred order by using discount code AMERICA.